All right, so good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. <laughs> Just kidding, you guys. Good afternoon, everybody. So welcome back to math class. Um, our statement of inquiry for this lesson is about, we're still on unit two, and it's all about generalizing relationships between measurements. It can help you develop principles, processes, and solutions. And our global context for this unit is all about scientific and technical innovation. So last meeting, we've talked about Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem states that if I have a right triangle, something like this, um, it tells us the relationship between the three sides of the triangle. But before that, I want to have a quick review first. So what do we call this side? Hypotenuse. We call it the? Hypotenuse. William. Hypotenuse. Yes, we call this the hypo hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And I will denote it by the letter H. And what about these two sides here? What do we call it? A and B. A and B, yes. We denote it by the letter A and B. But this A and B are called the? The legs, very good, I heard that. So A and B are the legs. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, there, Pythagorean theorem, according to the Pythagorean theorem, there is a relationship between the hypotenuse and the side. And we have talked about this last time in our mini investigation work. So what is the relationship between the hypotenuse and the legs of a right triangle according to Pythagora? William again. B squared plus B squared equals B. Okay, so Pythagoria states that if I square the hypotenuse, it will be equal to the square of the two legs. All right, so this is a very important formula. And please take note that this formula, it only works if we have a right triangle. So if the, tri if the triangle is not a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work. It only works if the triangle that we have. So what we are going to do is you are going to talk about yourselves, carry out a group discussion, share your insights, share your problem solving strategies as you work on these nine problems by groups. So there are nine problems, but I will be dividing that into three uh, different sections. So first, we are going to answer questions number one and number two. Okay, so answer that by group. Do the activity by group. And then once you're done, once your group is done answering questions one and two, uh, choose one representative from your group, and your group will come up here on, in front of the class and explain how we get the Um, I believe 
you got uh, about this since the guardians here the most important thing is the memorizing formula uh, and then we can get the answers mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so apply the formula, not just memorize the formula, but understand how the formula works in a particular problem. What about you, Um, The formula also. Uh-huh. What does the formula tell us? Does, does the formula tell us about relationships? Yes. What type of relationship does it tell us? When you add A squared plus B squared, when you add the other two sides of the two sides of the Oh, it will be more than I am William Ireland from grade 8 um, and I will be the subject in this interview. I am learning um, trigonometry and math uh, and we are just uh, beginning it. Um, I enjoy uh, doing activity with um, group mates uh, and solving problems together. Be critical thinking because math requires a lot of thinking and if I'm better at it, I'll be better at it. Um, I would say thinkers. Uh, yeah, thinkers. I think I had some trouble understanding lessons at the beginning, but after I uh, asked the teacher and I made things clear, then the problem was solved. My name is Teacher Raymond, and I am the grade 8 math teacher. I also teach in the diploma program, but in the MYT, I teach grade 8 math. Well, our unit is called, the title of that unit is about triangles. The key concept is about relationships, related concept is about measurement and generalization. And the whole lesson is grounded on scientific and technical innovation. That, that's the context, the global context of our unit. Well, in this lesson, we employed two of it. The first one is teaching that is inquiry-based. So we give uh, exploration problems uh, to students where they can explore more the idea of the relationships between sides in a, tri in a right triangle. And at the same time, it is also a teaching that is based on effective teamwork and collaboration, where students work together as they examine, explore, and learn more about, you know, um, as they inquire more um, about the relationships as it applies to triangles in mathematics. Number one is, of course, being an inquirer. They have to ask the right question and they have to be a thinker also to think about and use their knowledge on how to get the answers to the uh, inquiry questions that they are exploring. And at the same time, they also have to be a risk taker because, you know, presenting your findings, sharing your insights in a group, it involves risk. It exposes your vulnerability to others. So I think those are the two, those are the three learner profiles that were exhibited in the lesson, being an inquirer, a thinker, and a risk taker. I really like MYP, especially in terms of the emphasis that they place on concept-based learning and also inquiry-based uh, learning. I have been, I have looked at the work of Lynn Erickson, like Lynn Erickson, She's the proponent of concept-based teaching, and I really think that that is a good framework for learning. It, it gives students opportunities to learn concepts and to connect the concepts into different disciplines. I, would, I have to believe, and I would claim that being able to transfer one knowledge from one discipline to another is really a sign of learning. It's, 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 it's a sign that the student has really um, understood the importance of learning. So being able to transfer one knowledge to another rather than keeping knowledge compartmentalized is a sign of a student that has really engaged in meaningful learning.